All right, so I got some bad news followed by some good news. Uh, the bad news is he did go ahead and move everything in essentially into Berlin here, into Germany. So that puts a pretty hefty stack here where he's got 69, 9, 11 tanks, plus his 5 air there. Um, up from like he had like 30 some infantry here last time. So that's yeah, a big jump. The good news is I've already got 42, 46. I got another 10 and 13 that can come in there. Plus, because I overstacked Kaza, I can fly three of these UK fighters right on over to there. So <clears throat> we are going, we are still able to keep Baltic stacked against the uh, mass insurgents here. So that puts them in a kind of an interesting position here. This France is, I'm, I'm keeping my eye on this because right now I've got... 10 U.S. transports that could be fully loaded coming in there now. Granted, 12 here, 12 infantry, and then these guys can bring in four artillery at least. And then I've got these two fighters tucked in there. I got two fighters up there and a fighter down here. So five fighters, the cruiser, the battleship, and if UK takes Northwest Europe, these two bombers can reach it and land there as well. So that and I did the crunch, and that leaves a profitable battle if he doesn't move any of the the uh, Japan planes in. And I forget what it came to. Um, basically, to make it a non-profitable battle for the U.S., I think he needs to fly in like three Japan fighters. Is what it would take. I'm just double checking, looking back at my calculator here, real quick. But yeah, no, I mean, three fighters, actually, even three fighters wouldn't do it. He would need, uh, he needs a plan on four fighters coming in there to make it a non profit bout. Now, it's not that I would clear it, I would be losing air, but I would also be taking out a lot of his air. So, but that means he's got to be flying some planes in there, because if he doesn't fly some in there, then it, then it is going to be a a, a, a positive for me so I gotta figure some of these fighters down here are coming up to France which is gonna make the, uh, the whole bit next turn I'm probably gonna have to exit trading Northwest here because there's just gonna be a lot of Japan Air plus he moved his three bombers out to France so I gotta adjust my uh, American stacks of fleet so I got a feeling I probably gonna have this is gonna be the last time I get to hit Northwest Europe so I'm gonna go ahead and do that instead of coming down to Morocco again I, I mean I was debating on coming on down to Morocco but I think we're gonna hold off on that so that we can uh, go ahead and hit Northwest Europe one last time and put that threat there where maybe we could do some damage there if he doesn't fly enough Japan fighters in of course, that train of thought does lead to um, the, U the U.S. shucking getting out of whack. But maybe that's not a bad thing. I, th I think we're done shucking to Ala Alaska, Africa, regardless. So, All right. Um, so in any case, he did not bomb the U.K., thankfully. So he's still able to... I forgot. So he... Back down to 11 purchases, so that's good. 10 infantry and artillery. Um, he took Ukraine one for one. Poland, two for two, didn't take it. And then Northwest Europe, he killed two with no losses. So overall, um, he had three losses to killing five of my units, so a little more in my favor, especially since uh, I did, he did not take the territory here in Poland too, so he did not get that money. So that was a good, uh, a good turn for not Germany, which would be me. So uh, we were able to build uh, Brew 5, which just lets me build eight, <clears throat> eight infantry. Uh, downside is we are looking at only 23 income right now with 
the uh, UK. So if, if he does do a bombing run with the Japanese up here, uh, because we failed South Africa there, we didn't get those two, and we we're losing ground in here. Um, and I didn't move enough over here, so I am going to try to take Ukraine and hopefully get that bonus too and get the two from Northwest Europe to give me a, a few points of uh, buffer for UK. Okay, I've got nothing better to do. Might as well make sure we hit them. At the very least. Hopefully no hitbacks because I could use that money for uh, the UK. A little more so than the US needs it, I think. I believe that is it. So... Yeah, that's it. Oh, no. No, 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 no. That's three times in a row the cruisers hit. Oh, my goodness. I'm going to have to change my stance on cruisers. Oh, good, but not fighters. There we go. Oh, my goodness. I may have to stop dogging on the cruiser so much. <laughs> That's three in a row that he's hit. I wonder if, if we get four hits in a row, can we upgrade him to a battleship? Oh my goodness, I am glad I sent all seven planes. Ah. I would have liked to have had that money. Alright, well. I, like I said, it's the... Uh, the AA guns are alive this round in the factory, so if they try to bomb London, they'll pay for it. So I need four back here. The rest can come on up to here. These guys are going to go on into there. Learn from our lesson, we're going to bring them to there because we got enough going on that we don't need to put them in Baltic. feel pretty good about how my all my timing up here went with the uh, the shift and move and yeah you know, and, and it seems like it's got him a little bit wound up uh, in his bit so I'm, I'm I'm pretty happy how this this all turned out here so that's a, a nice positive there and no those four fighters have, are not traitors they are in Kazakh <laughs> all right there we go Okay, so as usual, I got some updates. Some of them are good. Some of them are not so good. Um, the biggest bad news is... <laughs> I believe I double counted these 10 guys in my Baltic stack. So I 
do not have as strong of a Baltic stack as I uh, <coughs> may have thought I had, which is calling for some audibling. Um, I think, I mean, I've got it covered, but certainly the rest isn't playing out exactly like I had wanted or planned per se. So that's bad news number one. Bad news number two is I cannot dead zone Novo this time with Russia's 19. So J19, he is going to be able to move into Novo finally. Most likely. I am going to buy, I'm still going to buy artillery to really discourage him. This is going to be a really good, this Baltic and Novo is going to be a really good test of getting a feel of where he feels he's at in this game. At this point, uh, I'm, I'm starting to get concerned. I, I think he's got an advantage and I'm, I'm now at a point where I'm going to need dice to help me a little bit if nothing else changes. So I'm getting to that point where I've got to start allowing uh, riskier options. The question is, is he going to put be aggressive and allow me to take a relatively risky option or not? So to explain it, we're going to go to the Baltic first here. I'm going to pull up the calculator here. <clears throat> this is what I'm going to offer him. This one I'm not as concerned about. Um, basically, I'm giving him a 60% chance to wipe me out at essentially a even profit. I mean, you can't be much more even than that. Uh, so odds are in his favor he wipes me out. But again, we're the aggressor, and he really wants to have a better exchange than that, to be to put it bluntly. Um, in addition, you can see this is going to last five rounds. You know, the first round is going to cost, what, a negative 20 IPC for him? And the reality is this doesn't flip over until the fifth round. So, you know, e even if you go three rounds into it, so he, he's got a negative 26 at three rounds into it. So really, he's got to be willing to, to roll the dice literally for five rounds to get to that point where it's even Steven. Um, I'm, I'm even at that point. I'm tempted to take one little, watch what one little infantry does. All of a sudden, it's a positive. You know, now he's up to a 64%. It's a positive 4 13 or 13 IPC for him and I hadn't actually run this yet because I really want that one infantry <laughs> one sinking infantry uh, but again yeah so he has to be willing to try to plug through a lot of negative IPC rounds you know I don't again I, I imagine it's not until the fifth round that he draws profit yeah, fourth round breaking even. So he's he's got to be willing to. But right now, I think I'm not quite ready to throw that up there yet. I think a lot of people, they they see how uh, positive that 54 was. And they're, they're going to, oops, on the full battle, sorry. And they're going to jump on it. So, I, I mean, that, that, that one little infantry change makes a big difference. So now we go to the Novo dead zone. If I build three artillery. Oh, no, that's not right. This one. If I build three artillery, it gives me a 50% chance to, uh, to clear him, but at a negative 16.5 advantage. Now, this the difference is on this one, He's going into it with the better uh, power stats. I'm going into it with the unit count. So this one, it starts smaller negative and builds up, whereas his battle, he has to risk a whole lot and trust that it's going to come down and he's going to eat into my fighters because I had a much bigger defensive power. He had the number of units. So it's kind of a flip. It's a different thought. It's a different risk. So 
for me, I'm basically risking three infantry to take a one round shot and just see what happens. He doesn't have any AA, so, you know, hey, maybe that's worth seeing what the dice pull out. I don't know. We'll see. I've got some other other plans too, but if I don't do the artillery, if I do just pure infantry and save because of the bombing runs, which in the long run may be the smarter way, to be perfectly honest, and maybe this is a mistake, but then his attempt to going in there, uh, it, it drops below 50% chance of winning, the negativity goes up significantly, and so I don't think he hesitates to stack Novo with those artillery. Maybe he pauses a second if he thinks he's in a good position right now. So that's the the main part, right? You know, that the two capital stacks. The other aspect I've done is I went and added up, you know, what if we, everything went into attack mode next round? He's got 129 units total that he can defend Berlin with. I have 106 multinational to attack with. So the reality is I need to flip this another 40 to 50 units positive on my side before I'm even going to have a chance of cracking that. His income is down to where he's building 10 on average. So I'm going to say he averages building 10 units a turn. Meanwhile, yes, he bombed. And yes, he did not get shot down. And so, yes, UK is really going to start struggling. Um, hopefully, we're going to start switching that around a little bit too. But we're going to say we're averaging, I'm going to be optimistic and say, except for this round, we're going to average seven units built a turn for UK. US, we're building two plus the three and a half transports worth. So that's seven, nine units a turn is seven is 16 to his 10 so i'm averaging five to six positive so i mean we're talking about eight to maybe 10 rounds until i legitimately have a shot at berlin so we're talking about round 26 27 28 um, and that's just me throwing guest numbers in the in the wind i don't know that Russia, and that's, you know, U.S. and U.K. not helping out Russia, right? So I don't know that Russia can hold out eight rounds, nine rounds. I mean, they got to hold out one less round, maybe two less rounds before we take Germany. Um, I don't know that they can do it. We'll see. So that brings us back to the the area that's really shifted the game is when Japan was able to break through India and then start shifting this income over to them. And now they've had a positive income advantage and those bombing rates. I mean, the bombing rates have been big. But here is my strategy. If you notice, his supply line now is rather restricted. And he's going to want to use these two to retake caucus because, I mean, that's a four IPC spot, right? So really, his supply line is three infantry at this point. And, you know, he's got 21 down here. I've got 19 down here. So he's got advantage. What I want to do is I want to draw this stack into Africa. And or I want to make him bring a transport or two down here to take South Africa. So I'm going to use two transports. I've only got uh, two units I'm building to come down to Africa this turn. I, I could divert. Well, because of my adaptation, I can't divert. I've got two units coming down to Africa being built this turn to come back down next turn, uh, potentially. Um, we'll talk more about that. So if I send four units down here and I kill this guy with two then he's only gonna have two he's got all this air I mean he can wipe it certainly but he's gonna want to transport at least one transport down here to make it a 4v4 plus his air and that brings his air down to one two three four where it's landing in one of these two spots where one two three four it can't reach Berlin not that he needs it to reach Berlin next turn so that's not really that big of a deal but also, one, two, three, four, it's not putting pressure on Moscow. 
uh, which we, we can use every little bit of pressure off as we can. So if I can just draw one or and or I can draw his stack to come in here as I retreat back, then he's going to have these three infantry he moves over. And from there, he'll be building three. I'm going to sneak this one UK tank or US tank into Moscow where the next turn we'll be able to take that tank and two bombers and you know, maybe well that's probably what it's going to be to try to take Persia as well as I'll have one infantry and one tank left here to trade Caucasus after whatever he does so that will leave me then two tanks two fighters to strike at three infantry presumably if he builds it to try to take India fighters can come back and land in Caucasus as we abandon Kazakh because he's gonna have that stack and then presumably hopefully we have one Russian tank sitting here. We're going to have seven UK fighters and a UK build before Japan would get its turn. And if all his units are pulled away that he can't pull them back, then what's he going to attack me with? And so then I'm going to have another turn to build before they come back. And, you know, then, you know, whatever, um, whatever it turns out to be, it means it's going to be a headache as he's going to have to pull out of Africa some. The U.S. can hopefully turn the offensive a little bit. And he's just going to have to deal with this one way or the other. Now, after his Novo stack, he's then going to come to here. So these units are going to be doomed, but maybe they can come down into the peninsula. Anything I can do to draw Japan units this direction, even if, even if my guys end up ultimately getting killed, the fighters won't, right? The fighters will fly back. If I can create headaches down here, then fantastic. So that's what we're going to be setting up for US 19, Russia 20 possibility. Possibly 20 and 21 if it doesn't quite, things don't line up and I got to come to Caucasus one turn and then I can still do that blitz. So that's what I'm setting up to hopefully, potentially, possibly create a headache into the middle of all the Japan so we kind of want to pull his guys in so we're gonna see how this goes this may this may end up playing out to be a disastrous play it may end up being a dice play um, I don't know so we're building 10 units six for him two for him and then two for one transport coming back um, what I'm gonna have to do unfortunately is I got to put these fighters into Baltic, which means I need to pull my boats up here, which means these transports, instead of coming to here where they could pivot down to Africa, they're going to have to go to sea zone one this turn. The following turn I can pivot back and maybe bring people down as emergency resources, but that may be too late depending on what all plans pans out down here. Meanwhile, I'm building a bomber and that's because he's using his carrier to threaten me. He's got no fighter down here to land on it so he did build another bomber oh yay um, so I can take this a bomber here keeps him from going to Alaska as well as you know if he wants to kill my transport with a carrier then that gives me a, a shot at killing his carrier um, I'd love to put a sub down here as well uh, but then that meant taking away my two units at all for coming to Africa. And uh, I just, unfortunately, I don't have enough enough mojo to go around.
intentionally spending slightly heavy again because I kind of want to invite him into here so that he can't reinforce back that way with a transport. I want to draw those units in if possible. Now, one of the plays I had been looking at until I realized I goofed this up, um, as well as I was kind of wanting to set up a retake of Caucasus and Persia by U.S. next turn possibilities, is I was looking at Blitz and the two tanks, two bombers, two fighters, you know, all hitting here against four infantry, and it's actually a profitable battle, and it would prevent him from being able to trade this next turn, but... It's just not meant to be. I was going to strike this guy with the U.S., but that's just going to have to be a no-go because I need everybody in here because of my miscount. I hate not having anything to do with them. I would bomb. <laughs> I just feel like I have no success at bombing. Although bombing India wouldn't be bad, right? Although that would kind of let them know what I'm planning. Although he wants to keep building here, maybe it wouldn't. I don't know. Should I send a bomber there or not? Should I send a bomber there or not? only need one right because he can hit six two of them is kind of an overkill on a three spot little hesitant on this. I mean, I suppose going up there would make more sense anyways, right? Because he's maxing out. I believe he's maxing out his production. He's buying 16 units. He's got 16 spots. Yeah, he's maxing out his production, so... potential there and I think that is it for our attacks the downside of this too is I have to basically abandon, you know, leave these unguarded. So he's just going to walk into them. He's got one shot there. So guess who's going to pay the price? <laughs> he's going to bomb this all the way down to nothing with the German bombers. I just got that feeling. Never have ever wanted to see sixes more often than now, right? Sixes, sixes, sixes. Sixes is what we want. There's a six. All right, let's need another six. Oh! Oh, hey! It's a party in the USA! Woohoo! Let's keep those sixes rolling. One more six. One more six. Come on. All right. I'll take a four. <laughs>
Uh, my heart can start beating again. sixes. Oh, that stinks. There goes any chance of dead zoning. <sighs> well, there goes any, any dead zone possibility. But we can stay here one more turn at least. I don't think he's going to take a free shot to Destroyer. I, I'm okay with my defense against Jeremy, so I want to get him out. But I think I'm actually going to pull him back here just in case I need another hit shot for these guys coming back up. Because I don't really need them up there, and I don't think he's going to take a free shot, so this lets me kind of be a little bit flexible with him. That's everybody. Let's double check this up here real quick. So this is giving me 30 units, 35, 37, 60, 79. Is that what I'm supposed to have? Double check. I want to make sure we do this right. This is kind of an important part. This says I should have 79 units, so that appears to be it. Five fighters coming in, right? Uh, six fighters coming in. Oh yeah, we had five, so 11 fighters. We got our one tank sitting in there. We got seven artillery coming in with the 11. Seven artillery coming in. 35, 45, 54 infantry, two AAs. All right, we're good there. All right, I think that's everybody moved. I think I'm gonna hold that artillery back here just in case we want him for Africa. Not really sure how this is gonna pan out right now.
now that I have to use one Russian infantry back that way, I, that's just going to really kind of block the whole stack bit or dead zone bit even at a risky part. So now I'm thinking that maybe the uh, best route is just going to be to build pure infantry and not mess with the artillery now. Such a bummer. Such a bummer. Because I wanted to see what his uh, risk... I really did want to see what his risk tolerance was going to be. But it's just not worth it. Not only that, I think I'm just going to... plan on straight infantry build. Let me make sure I'm good on Kaza. So we're going to be flying those three back this time we have to. So that'll give me nine fighters. He's now got four bombers in the world. Good gracious. So So, so I need to think about this for a minute. So, since my hopes and dreams have been dashed, let's not hold on to them, right? So I, I think we are just going to build infantry. We can wipe out those guys. Then, uh, potentially, yeah, we keep them from retrading caucuses, right? All right? We gotta start taking a little bit of risk, so we're gonna put risk on the board now. I just, I, I don't have anything around it, we're just doing it. So this would help Africa and Caucasus if we could hit these guys this time. Are you freaking me? Are you... Oh my god. I just ain't got anything to say. This, this mm. dice just don't want me in this game. By the way, the. Uh, Update on the uh, strategic bombing raid. He has now done 21, has not lost a single ship, and has done 76 damage. Which, without doing all the breaking down all the math, basically he should have profited about 19 total IPC with 21 shots. And instead, he's profited 76. So 57 IPC his way on those bombing raids. Oh, I guess I didn't put my two shots. I just did on there. I should add those in there. Well, I'm already committed to this, so... There we go.
Okay, so I had to figure out a rebalancing here. Um, not a big fan of it, but it's what we're going to do. It, it gives him a little bit of an opportunity in Moscow, to, be, to put it bluntly, where he could do a one infantry, two tank, three bomber, four fighters from down here, attack on a stack that I'll have here, uh, 11 and 1, which isn't horrible, but I don't think he'll take it. Oh, man, I really wanted to kill those guys. I am not going to lie. I still may. I, I may take my fighters after them. Because, I mean, yeah, we'll see. I don't know. We may. I am bitter. Getting bitter with the dice right now. All right. Nonetheless, I think we're done here. All right, end of turn. Starting to not feel good on this game, but hopefully we can create something with this uh, setting up a play down here of some sort. 